Well, it's me, and I'm telling the truth. I am never going to breathe. All what we really want to do, and we're just sitting here and we're saying, you know, like, all I really want to do is tell you a little snippet of a story to get you interested. <clears throat> and usually these stories that I start telling you in one video, um, there'll be ongoing stories and they're all like threads. Every one of the videos that I put up here, they're all a thread and an enormous magic carpet. And, you know, sometimes I get started talking about one thing and then I get off track. So to some people it might sound that way. To other people I'm just simply segueing into another related thing that is related. So, you know, sometimes I go forward, sometimes I go sideways, sometimes I go way back to the beginning to refer to something, you know, 3,200 videos ago. And it's weaving the story of what's going on. And I want to make it interesting, uh, at least from time to time, for you. Because I want it to, to sort of shake your cage. It's like, does anything that's going on in my life sound like somehow something that's going on in your life or some person you know? I don't know how to tell you this, but most of the people that are listening right now are not able to really explain to you what went on today with us. But we had an enormous uh, volcanic uh, uh, em eruption. Uh, and what it uh, ended up being was a very hot lava. And, you know, like having hot lava um, well, anyways, that was this morning, and once we got past the hot lava section of the day, uh, we had lunch, and we sat in the sun, and now we're out for a walk. It doesn't sound terribly exciting when I put it that way, but that's kind of the way I could, like, just generally, just if I didn't want to tell you what was really going on, I'd just say that. So instead of that, we want to give you uh, 5D news. I haven't given you 5D news for a couple weeks. Now, the backstory of the 5D news is there's two ways to look at uh, current events. The 3D way of looking at current events is uh, the way that people who are glued to their um, CNN or Fox News channel, that's all they watch, or people who are like, on um, satellite radio and they listen to like for example Howard Stern all day long these are brainwashing channels and um, generally if you're listening to only one channel you're being brainwashed you're getting a distorted view of um, whatever they're talking about because humans just distort things they exaggerate and sometimes they don't exaggerate and it gives you an idea that something is smaller than it actually is. Communication with English to actually get across to you what is really being meant by the sender of the message, uh, it's, it's not very good. People think it's really good. You know, it's very uh, precise language. You can use scientific and Latin taxonomy. Um, and then you can throw in some Bulgarian people. No, 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 no. We're not going to throw in Bulgarian. We're going, but we'll talk that you know even these other things, these Latin roots of English and stuff. Uh, how do we know what these Latin words really meant back then? How many people are learning Latin in schools? Well, they used to offer it in Ontario schools in my parents' generation, but it's been stripped away. You can't learn Latin or Greek at uh, you know Ontario schools. Why is that? I don't know.
Why do we want to learn Latin or Greek? It's mostly because we want to understand. Why, oh, we, we really, like, uh, seriously in Ontario, uh, the public school here offers English or French. The languages that we need in, uh, if you're a Canadian these days, Punjabi and uh, Mandarin, Cantonese. But they're not taught at our schools. Why not? Because our schools are so far behind current events. They're still thinking we need French because, uh, you know, historically they said, well, it was, uh, you know, the English Empire and the French Empire that came into uh, North America and, um, you know, Quebec was French and Ontario was English. Uh, way back, you know, in the days of sailing ships before railways, that's the way it was. And that's why they teach French here, you know, in Ontario. But the truth of the matter is, uh, since that time, um, things have changed in Canada. And the stupid way that we look at history, that is, stuff that we inherited that's so old it's antique, can't be changed and then we have these stupid things like seriously children today here in Ontario uh, if they've got two languages that they can take they could take their first language uh, and then they could take the second language which two are you going to pick in Ontario province well I mean if you're going to go to Walmart and talk to somebody there they you need English but if you're going to go to uh, Toronto or Vancouver, uh, you need um, to experience a community that is a recognized community. And what's that going to be? Well, you know, there's like the English speaking community, and then there is an enormous Chinese dialect community, and an enormous um, South Asian or India community. So if you go and look on the uh, job ads in Vancouver and say you thought, well, I want to work at the Royal Bank. You look and it says you must speak uh, and pretty much everywhere in Vancouver. You got to have your second language being um, Mandarin, Cantonese, or Punjabi. Or you don't get the job because there's plenty of people there that can speak those two languages. But here in Ontario province, they don't teach those languages because they're still stuck in 1867 when Canada was founded. You know, the founding races, the English and the French. This is how stupid we are. It's so cumbersome being stuck with this historical accident. It's irrelevant to today, and yet it's not doing a service to the children. The children, you know, seriously, what do they need French for? Well, if you want to go and move to Ottawa and you want to work for the federal government of Canada, English and French is good. Where else? It's stupid. Canada doesn't trade with France, so we don't need French. French is like, seriously, you know, it's a, it's a abandoned language. It's abandoned. If uh, somebody from Canada wants to speak to somebody from Hong Kong, uh, and they both um, can, they can have, have a, one of those languages in common? It ain't going to be French. It was, uh, you know, under Pierre Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's father, the idea was bilingualism and you could be like a bilingual Canadian. But seriously, 
people in my town in Ontario, we all took a lot of French. But now how much French do I speak? Zero. I don't speak French here in Ontario. I don't. I don't. Once in a while, if I'm trying to think, could I still speak a little bit of French? Uh, yeah, but how good? Uh, not good enough to get along in, like, Quebec City without, you know, somebody there knowing English. My French is no good anymore because it's out of practice. But anyway, the whole point of all of this backstory is, uh, well... Uh, there was a, a, a member of the banking community who posted on LinkedIn white privilege. The person was a white male. And then there was some other tagline like, you know, get involved or something like that. But what was the whole point? Uh, some senior executive at one of these banks, Canadian banks, to put white privilege on his LinkedIn post. It was to trigger me. Because I said, uh, I'm white, I'm a white male, and you know, in uh, Vancouver, one of the major cities of Canada, uh, I can't get a job at your bank, dude. Because your bank insists that the second language uh, is a Punjabi or a Cantonese or Mandarin or it's Chinese or from, from India. That's what the that's what these jobs are all looking for. And I understand because there's a huge community of these people there. But seriously, I'm white and I don't have a privilege in Vancouver, Canada. I've got a disadvantage in Vancouver, Canada, the country I grew up in, because it's changed so much. Am I butthurt about it? Uh, I, I I accept that there's been change. And I uh, accept, you know, if I really wanted to get out of my way, I could maybe uh, fly to Punjab and Amritsar there and stay in Amritsar and learn Punjabi or something. But, you know, realistically, at my stage of life, uh, I'm not going to do that. But to say, to go out of your way and say, you know, I'm racist, because that's what white privilege says. It says, I'm a racist. Whoever posts this thing. This thing is totally about being racist against white people. And some other people are like, well, white people need to be racist against because they need to learn their lesson. But what I told this banking executive was, uh, you know, why come you didn't post yellow privilege or brown privilege? Is it because you're white? Because I didn't see like three of them. I didn't see white privilege and then yellow privilege and then brown privilege all put there as examples of people so-called having privilege. Didn't see that. It was just white. Why white? Why white, Mr. Banker? These are the quality of the executives and Canadian banks. If they represent white privilege, well, pretty much the white privilege is, it ain't white privilege, what you're talking about. It's the privilege of the elite. The privilege of the very wealthy. You know, oh, Mr. Burns on The Simpsons, you know, he was like the richest guy in Springfield. Oh, yeah, he was white. In any event, I simply have to point my finger out at Evo. And this is racist claptrap. This white privilege going on and on and on. It is a holdover 
from days gone by. Why does it keep getting reintroduced to the next generation of young people? Seriously, in the 1970s when I was a young person, uh, racism was being talked about there. So why haven't we progressed? It's because people keep dragging all this shit and reteaching it to children. And children are still taught that uh, in America, uh, white people had black slaves. Is it true? Far as we can tell, it was the landed gentry, that is landowners who had enormous cotton fields, who were the slave owners, the aristocrats, the 1%, the wealthy, the elite. These were the ones who had slaves. I don't know how long I can keep going on about this. It's like in history, only Caucasians were slave owners on planet Earth. In all of planet Earth history, it was just Caucasians, just white people. Is that what you've come to believe? Not according to the history that I've reviewed over the years. So why do we still keep this up? It's an agenda by someone who's got a lot of money. And what is the agenda? It's not only to sow division between the races, but it is to continually have not any more time sorry that's all i can say for this uh in the end um <coughs> please stay tuned i'm sure we'll have more to give you today